Welcome back to another episode of the Higher Up Podcast. I'm your host, Michael Smoke, aka Higher Up Wellness on various social media platforms. And today I'm going to be talking with you about what I believe to be the nine biggest fitness mistakes that people make at all levels of their fitness journey. Now, I've seen these in beginners, I've seen these in intermediates, I've seen these in so-called experts. And when you clean these things up, you ultimately expedite your progress or start making progress if you felt stalled before. These are in no particular order. I may have missed some that you think are bigger than the ones that I'm going to list. If so, I would love to hear them in the comments. If you're here for the first time, thank you. It's an absolute pleasure to have you. I'm honored to have you on your drive or your morning walk or wherever you're headed while you're listening to me. Yep. I'm excited to share these with you. I hope that maybe some of you are unconsciously incompetent towards some of these things, or maybe you are doing these things thinking they will give you forward progress and that by hearing this and maybe hearing the explanation and context that I provide, you'll be able to stop doing these things, pushing you further in your fitness journey. Quickly, before we get started, I do want to say I have a community. The link is in my bio across all my social media platforms. It's called the Higher Up Lifestyle. It's a really cool, positive place where like-minded people are getting together to share their wins, their struggles, their questions, and ultimately be around people striving for the same goal. It's not easy to find people who love getting morning sunlight, hitting their step goals, eating their protein goal every day, and enjoying a life of continuous self-development. That's what I'm trying to create with the Higher Up Lifestyle. I release courses in there weekly on how to do various things across fitness, nutrition, and mindset. And every single course has something to do with what I preach in my content or what I think people are wanting to hear about in more depth based on your comments and your feedback. They're built exclusively based on what the people want to hear. This week, I'm releasing the bulking playbook. The following week, we will be doing a mindset playbook. Playbooks every week, you can post in there and interact with each other. We have games and challenges that I'm launching every single month inside of the community, and I'd love to have you in there and see you. I also go live in there twice a week exclusively for the community members, for private Q&As, and various yap sessions like this one, just live. That's all I'll say about that. Now let's get into the meat and potatoes of this episode, which are the nine biggest fitness mistakes I see people make. At this point in my journey and now my career, I've had hundreds of conversations with people, most of which are potential coaching clients or current coaching clients. So I have a decent sample size of what I hear in the market, what the challenges are, what the main pain points are that people are facing, albeit sometimes unaware of, that they're doing that may be sabotaging their fitness journey or slowing down their progress. Number one is avoiding weights or resistance training and being a cardio king or queen. Now, one might assume this is a, a problem mainly in females that women think they don't want to get too bulky. That's a myth. That's all I'm going to say about it. You can't get too bulky. You might have to train for a decade to get too bulky, but you ain't going to get bulky by picking up a weight quickly. But one thing I see in the older male demographic is desire for when they want to lose weight, they'll just say, oh, I jog a few miles a week, and that normally gets the weight off. And you know what? That's great. That's increasing your step count. That's giving you some zone two cardio. That's great for health and longevity. It burns calories. But if the goal is changing your physique, appearing physically different and not just thinner, you have to give the muscles a reason to change. One of the best analogies I heard was from my uh, podcast called Mind Pump. And one of the hosts, it's a co-hosted podcast, three guys, Sal, Adam, and Justin. If you know it, you know it's a great podcast. I believe the number one fitness podcast in the world right now. Not for long. Just kidding. Um, he talks about an analogy of if you want a body like a Ferrari, train like a Ferrari. If you want a body like a Prius, train like a Prius. Priuses are fuel efficient. They can go forever, but they don't go very fast. Ferraris are sexy. They're quick, terrible gas mileage. They're inefficient. If you're talking pure efficiency, they're inefficient. And we want inefficient bodies. Big biceps are not efficient metabolically, but they sure do look good. So if you want big biceps, pecs, more rounded delts, a better butt, if you're a gal or a guy, I don't judge, you have to train in accordance with that. You should be weight training. If the goal is weight loss, if the goal is muscle gain, resistance training should always be the core at the core of your fitness routine. It is going to build muscle so you'll look better, which is also in turn going to have a positive impact on your metabolic rate. Adding pounds of muscle to your frame allows you to burn more calories at rest. Now, some people have said a pound of muscle burns 50 calories at rest, meaning if I'm just sitting here for an hour and then I add 10 pounds of muscle, I burn an extra 500 calories an hour. We know now that's probably not true. It's a handful of calories. It's not 50. It's probably a little bit less than that. However, if you put 8, 10, 12, hell, 5 pounds of muscle on your frame in a couple of years, your body is going to require more energy just to exist. Thereby, you're able to eat more food when you're cutting. You're able to eat more food getting out in your everyday life and enjoying yourself without fearing fat gain. So 
the, one of the biggest mistakes I see is people thinking they just need to walk or run or do the Stairmaster or do the elliptical or do hit classes to lose weight. Strength training should always be at the core of your fitness routine and you should always be trying to get stronger on a solid training program. Point number two, hiring a commercial gym personal trainer. There I said it. It's a mistake. Don't hire gym PTs. Obviously, I'm, I'm being somewhat hyperbolic, um, speaking in hyperbole. There are good gym personal trainers. In my experience, I haven't seen any yet. Well, I've seen a couple, very few. The point is gym, commercial gyms and big box gyms, the certifications required to get in are minimal, to say the least. NASM and CPT, when someone says, I'm a NASM certified personal trainer, I don't care, Paul. You're an idiot. Okay, I have rarely seen a NASM cert on a person who is competent. They're making their clients do crazy shit. They don't put them on a cohesive program. So what I'm telling you is on the whole, maybe consider not hiring a PT, maybe learn it yourself. If you really want to hire a PT because you want that in-person accountability, certain gyms have great ones. You know, a gym like Equinox has very stringent hiring parameters for who they bring on, but not everybody goes to an Equinox. That's a very bougie gym that exists mainly in large metropolitan cities like LA and New York. But here's how to spot an idiot that's a PT. If you start talking to the personal trainer, one, most obvious sign, they should have a good physique. They should be physically fit. That's my personal opinion. If you don't agree, sorry, it's my podcast. I'm never going to hire a fat personal trainer. I don't feel that that's inclusive or accepting. I feel that if you are teaching me how to look different and better and I'm 50 pounds overweight, why would I want to hire you if you're 60 pounds overweight? And at my commercial gym, I have, I have trainers that are fat, like very overweight, notably overweight, don't look like they exercise. And I don't understand how they're trainers. I don't understand how they get clients. That's one way. Are they living it? Do they look like, you know, a question that I ask is, do I want your results? If I'm going to take advice for you or insight from you, let me look at your results. Do I want them? If so, then I'll maybe listen to you, what you have to say. If you look worse than me, or you don't look like you do what you say, I'm probably not going to listen. The next thing is, when they're talking about what kind of regimen or protocol they're going to put you on, it should sound like we're going to put you on something structured or we're going to put you on something regimented or we're going to make sure you're getting stronger in these movements each week or every Monday is going to be an upper body day or a lower body day. Some cohesive pattern across the board because a good training program is required to build muscle because you have to track those movements over time. And if you're doing a different movement every week, you're not going to make a lot of progress because how do you know if you're improving if you're doing squat jumps and then burpees and then push-ups and then pull-ups and there's no there's no there's no repeatability to it there has to be repeatability so if they're just getting you in there doing a bunch of sexy hit cardio get your heart rate way up movements because they think it'll keep you excited and engaged that is not good gym advice the best gym advice just like most advice in life is unsexy advice just like good financial advice is save more than you spend put money away each month, invest in the market. There's a reason it, it's so common and it's unsexy is because it works. Generally, the people giving the unsexy advice are the ones who are giving the best advice. So if someone's tempting you with flashy, always changing, tons of variety types of workouts, that's probably not the personal trainer you want to go with. But if you find a personal trainer that talks respectfully, like I do, that's a good trainer. Just saying. Not that I'm a coach or anything. Book a call, link in the bio. Anyway, Number three is drastically undershooting your nutrition. Now, I, I thought about making this under and overshooting because some people eat way too much and wonder why they don't lose weight. We'll get to that in a minute. But a lot of times in both men and women, they're shocked when I tell them to put their body metrics through a total daily energy expenditure calculator to find out their calorie maintenance. And they always say, I just feel like that's way too many calories. I'm a 28 year old man who's 5'11", 250, walks 10,000 steps a day and trains five days a week. And I'm eating 1100 calories. My brother in Christ, what? I haven't eaten 1100 calories since I was 13. What people often think is they just attach feelings or, or notions based on quite literally nothing on their fitness journey. And they just eat that much. And women are even worse. I've seen women eating 800 to 1,000 calories a day and 50 grams of protein. If the goal is to create fat loss, aggressive deficits can work. The problem with this is when you're a beginner and you're not conscious of I'm in an aggressive deficit, you just think that's what you're supposed to eat and you're depriving yourself by 1,500 calories under your maintenance every single day, eventually what you're going to do is binge. Your body is going to say, you have deprived us so heavily 
I'm going to release so much ghrelin, the hunger hormone. I'm going to make you so hungry that you put something that tastes decently good in your mouth and you feel like you can't stop. And then these people say they're mystified why they can't lose weight because they're eating a thousand calories a day because they'll eat a thousand, a thousand, a thousand for four or five days. And then they'll eat 8,000 on a Saturday and they'll negate the whole week's progress. If you want to lose weight, you look at weekly averages. I go with a five to 700 calorie daily deficit equating to a 3,500 to 4,000 calorie weekly deficit. So as long as I'm within that numbers, I could tweak my calories day by day accordingly. And some people do that. Some people eat 1,700 calories one day, 3,000 the next, 1,500 the next. I don't like that. But the point is when you violate the law of weekly averages, you violate the law of thermodynamics, thereby not losing body fat. So one of the things I see is people are often grossly under eating and they would adhere to their diet better if they understood their calorie maintenance and trusted the damn calculator because it's right. It's rooted in science. It's always within 10 to 15% of your actual metabolic rate. If you punch in your height, weight, best guess at your body fat, and you're honest about your activity level, when I do that on my TDEE calculator, it's almost dead on 3,200 calorie maintenance a day. That's pretty damn close for me. So stop eating a thousand calories a day, male or female, that is toxic. That'll lead you to spin your wheels and develop a horrible relationship with food and a binge restrict pattern. So eat some damn nutrients and eat more protein. 0.8 grams to one gram per pound of body weight. If you're listening to this podcast, I've beaten that point to death. And that's all I'm going to say. 0.8 grams to one gram per pound of body weight in protein every day. I'm 200 pounds, 200 grams of protein. If you have more than 50 pounds to lose, eat your goal body weight in grams of protein. That's all. Point number four. Thinking that f getting fit, it means not enjoying food or some aspect of your life. I hear this all the time when I ask people in coaching consult calls, scale one to 10, how committed are you to, to really figuring this stuff out, to learning how to do this stuff forever, to sustainably implementing these habits? How committed are you? Be honest. And the, the people who always say an eight, a seven or eight or nine are because they say, oh, I just, I want to go out. I have kids. I don't have all the time in the world. No, stop it. Stop. Being fit only adds value to your life. And if it does anything different, you are doing it wrong. It should not feel miserable. It should not feel restrictive. You should not feel low energy. You should not hate the gym. You should not hate yourself. This should add value to your life. 10 times out of 10, me being a fitter, healthier me adds value to my relationships, my job, my time out and about. I enjoy food more when I do eat out and eat something maybe a little bit outside of my normal realm. I enjoy it. I appreciate it. I've earned it. I've worked hard. I've hit my step goal. I know I've planned accordingly. What I'm saying is I feel infinitely more value in my life when I take care of myself. And if you feel anything else, you're eating the wrong foods, you're over-exercising, you're over-restricting, you have a bad relationship with it, and it's time to be more sustainable. One component of this is People think getting fit means eating food that tastes like shit. 90s bodybuilders adopted that mentality because I think they wanted to gatekeep fitness and make you believe it's harder than it is to get fit. And that's because most of them are idiots and they're all on a bunch of steroids and they don't know what they're doing. I enjoy every meal I eat. Last night, I had some perfectly seared sirloin with some caramelized onions and some air fried sweet potatoes and a zero calorie lemonade. And that meal was delicious. So learn how to cook. Seasoning is not against the law when you're trying to lose body fat. And boiled chicken and broccoli is not the only thing on the menu. Your rules are just whole foods. Grew on the ground, grew on a tree, or had a mom and dad and ran in a field. Real food from the earth. And some of you out there know how to cook. You can make delicious meals out of that. Wonderfully seared or grilled steaks, roasted potatoes, roasted vegetables, caramelized onions and mushrooms, one of my favorites. You can make delicious, tasty food that is high in protein, high in micronutrients, Low, lower calorie or has a lot of nutrient dense filling calories. Stop associating being fit with being miserable. Going for a walk is one of my favorite parts of my day. Hitting your step goal does not have to be miserable. I clear my head. I think better. I feel better. My energy levels are cleaner and, and more even. All Everything about it is just valuable. So stop viewing it as anything other than. And if you're doing that still and you've tried and you failed and you tried and you failed, Watch some more of my videos because I like my life a lot. And I think you will too if you do fitness right. Number five is sort of, a, I guess, a callback to number one or number two, and it's not following a program. Now, this is for you people that have maybe been in the gym 60, 90, 120 days, and for a little while, it was just about solidifying the habit of just going to the gym, doing some machines in a circuit, breaking a sweat, 
losing that first 10 to 20 pounds and building the habit of consistently going to the gym as part of your routine, like brushing your teeth, like showering. Now we're at the point where we want to make real changes in our physique. That's going to require a structured training program. If you want to burn calories, you want to get really sweaty, random exercise is great. But if we can't track it, we can't change it. If we can't measure it, we can't improve it. So that's the approach you need to take. And a good training program in my community, the Higher Up Lifestyle, link is in my bio. I think I'll try to put the link in the YouTube bio as well. I have a training program playbook where I do a step-by-step 10 video series on how to build your own training program. And then I roll through my training program in detail. Basically, they have to be predictable, repeatable movements targeting the same muscle groups. Every Monday, I'm hitting lat pull down, dumbbell incline bench, chest supported row, and lateral raise and bicep curls. I'm doing those every single Monday, and I'm trying to get stronger in those or add reps in those over time because that is how I'm tracking my change. And if we're doing different movements every week, I have no idea how to gauge my level of improvement. Does that make sense? Are we tracking here? If you can't track it, you can't change it, and it should be moving in an upward direction. For those of you listening, I'm moving my hand left to right as if it were on an X and Y axis. So you have to follow a structured, repeatable training program if you want your physique to look notably different. If you just want to lose a few pounds, fine. Go sweat, get a handle on your nutrition. But if you want to build muscle tissue, you have to be on a structured training program. You have to pick key movements and repeat them for 8 to 12 weeks at a time. And every 8 to 12 weeks, you can change the programming out and develop different substitutions or new variations of similar movements, right? You can swap barbell flat for dumbbell flat or barbell incline for dumbbell incline, something to that effect. Number six, not getting active outside of the gym. This is a tale as old as time. I just had a conversation with one of my buddies who I share this office space with about how he's getting leaner. He just joined uh, Nutrition Solutions Meal Prep using my code. You're a dog for that. And he's getting leaner because he's eating so much protein. He's eating whole foods. He's eating a moderate amount of calories. If you're interested in Nutrition Solutions Meal Prep, by the way, it is the GOAT. It's a huge time saver. Code HU to save 15% on your first order. I promise this podcast won't become one big ad read. I just have things that I believe in, that I love, that I use every day that I think will help you. Back to the point. Not getting active outside of the gym is one of the biggest disservices you can do to yourself and your progress. I cannot tell you how many coaching clients I had that were just totally unconscious of their steps or saying, yeah, I get five to 6,000 a day. And then I go, okay, mandatory 10,000. You're not, you're not going below 10 every single day. First four weeks without even tracking calories, just protein goal, whole food steps, gym, five to 12 pounds on average, gone, melted off because it's estimated every 10,000 steps can burn between four and 700 calories, depending on how big you are, your frame, that sort of thing. So it's hugely critical. I mean, that could be 4,000 calories in a week added to your daily or your weekly expenditure. So getting steps is getting in the gym is not enough. Okay. If you say I'm in the gym crushing it five days a week and I'm just not losing a pound. Okay. Well, you're in the gym five days a week for an hour and you're awake for 14 to 15 hours a day. And the other 14 hours of the day, you're sitting on your ass. You're sedentary. You're getting 2,500 steps. You're not burning any energy. The average strength training workout or high intensity interval workout will burn between three and 600 calories on the entire day. And you can burn an additional six to 700 to make that energy expenditure 1400. Now you can double your daily energy expenditure by hitting 10,000. Personally, when I cut, I like to do a minimum of 15,000. And on days I hit 20,000, I don't even really worry about my caloric intake. I know I'm going to be in a deficit and the fat melts off of me. So outside of your gym routine, there should be 60 total minutes of other sort of low intensity exercise activity. For me, it's a, it's the gym and then a 15 minute walk in the morning, 20 minutes in the mid afternoon, and then 20 to 40 minutes in the evening, depending on how much time I have. That always puts me at 10,000 steps right now. I've got one. Well, we haven't done the step check yet. I'll wait. Point is just make your new floor 10,000 steps. And I promise you will get so lean so fast. It's unbelievable. Please trust me. Point number seven. This is a good one. I like this one a lot. Majoring in the minors. Asking the questions that you think experts are asking that experts are not concerned about. I've never had someone with a great physique or a ton of knowledge on training ask me questions like, what's the best time to eat? Do I need to have a post-workout meal? Do I lose my gains if I don't eat within 45 minutes of my workout? How, how many meals should I have a day? How much protein per meal should... Stop. Breathe. None of that matters. 
None of us are trying to step on stage and win the Olympia. And if you are, you probably know the answers to those questions. Your goal is to lose 50 pounds to look better naked or gain 15 pounds to look better naked. You want to have a better physique. You want to look better. You want to feel better. You've got big, broad goals. You're not trying to win a bodybuilding competition. You should focus on eating real food, hitting your protein goal at the end of every day. doesn't matter how many hours pass between meals, walking 40 to 60 minutes in the gym two to four times a week. More if you like but that's, that's your standard. If you just do those things and don't worry, oh, and eating whole food, real food. If you just do those things and don't worry about anything else, that is 85 to 90% of the work, okay? Stop worrying about, if, if there's anything that you think you're confused about that's outside of those things, throw it out. Take it out of the mental file cabinet. Do like that episode of SpongeBob where his brain was burning and he couldn't remember his own name. Do that with all of those fitness questions because none of them matter. I don't care what anyone tells you. Okay, real food, regular movement, normal high levels of activity, tons of protein, and sleep and water. That's it. That's the recipe. That's the formula. That's the magic pill that everybody's seeking in a pill or powder or bottle. That's it. So any of those questions, what's the best this, the best workout program? I hate what's the best questions. Every time someone asks me it on a live stream or in a comment, I say I'm not answering that. There is no best. The best Anything is the one you will stick to long-term to see change. It's that simple. Point number eight. Ugh, this one. Being dishonest with themselves and then acting mystified when they don't see results. So many people, so many, so many people. Oh my God. I'm taking off the glasses to rub my temple. Ugh. So many people say this exact thing to me. I'm in a calorie deficit and I'm not losing weight. I've been in a calorie deficit for three months and I'm not losing weight. What's happening? I'll tell you, Janet. The bottle of wine you have in the evening counts. The three handfuls of almonds you had that's 1,100 calories counts. It all counts. You are not being honest with yourself. You are not being for real with yourself. You are not calling yourself out. I'll just have a little bit here. I'll just have a little bit there. And then before you know it, you've had a lot. You haven't had a little bit. You've had a little bit 14 times in a day. And that's a thousand calories or you ate chicken and salmon and vegetables all day. And then this is no, no shit. I know a real person that does this, that has spent tens of thousands of dollars on modifying their body because they're mystified as to why they can't lose weight because they work their ass off, but they have a bottle to two bottles of wine every night. That is why you can't lose weight because that is 1500 calories. Oh, Ugh. I just got fired up. So call yourself out. Okay. You're either genuinely misinformed and making a mistake. Like for example, something a lot of people do is they don't weigh their food. Maybe they eat a lot of nuts like almonds, pistachios, macadamias. I weighed out a serving of macadamia nuts. One serving is 200 calories. No shit. It's like six nuts. It's not, it's, it's less than the palm of my hand. Okay. And most people are eating big handfuls and easily getting 600 calories of fat. Now that's not to say that nuts are bad. I got flack for saying Pistachios are, are not protein sources. They're not. They're fat sources. They're great sources of healthy fats. Some, some of you need more fiber. Nuts are a great way to do that. You just have to be mindful of how much you're consuming. That is one of those foods that you have to weigh out. You just do. Not even in a measuring cup. On a food scale. Peanut butter, nuts, nut butters of any variety, oils, liquid calories. Those are things that very easily add up and can sabotage you. If you're cooking in six tablespoons of oil, and pouring it in a bowl, all that oil is hundreds of calories. One tablespoon of olive oil is 120 calories, okay? It counts. It all counts. It's great if you're on a bulk and you struggle to get enough food in. Fat is your friend. But you have to be willing to call yourself out and say, I know why I'm not losing weight. I, there's a gap, and I'm not, I'm not willing to address it because it's my safety blanket or it makes me feel better. I, I can't do without my wine in the evening. Yes, you can if you don't want to be fat anymore. God. <sighs> okay, now that I'm all fired up, let's end on a calmer note, a more positive and encouraging note about sustainability. The final point here that I think is a huge mistake on anyone's fitness journey is having an all or nothing mentality. This is probably a hodgepodge of a few of the earlier points, but so many people have told me, I feel verbatim, I feel like I have to be all in or all out to see results. You have to start viewing fitness as a spectrum. You have times in your life where you're more dialed in 
and you have times in your life when you're less less dialed in. Right now, I'm more dialed in. I want to gain weight. The bulk did not go as planned because of injuries and sickness and travel and setbacks. That's okay. But for the next four to six weeks, I'm dialed in. I'm eating like it's my job. I'm training like it's my job. I don't care if I gain fat. I want to get strong and I want to put on size. I know I can cut in six weeks. I'm not worried about the fat gain. However, later in the year, when I'm chilling, it's the springtime. I may go out. I may drink. I may travel. St. Patrick's Day, summertime in Atlanta is a lot of fun. What have you. I might be less dialed. Don't get me wrong. There's always a home base. Jake Hayes, a friend of mine, who's also in the community, is also a content creator. I think he's lost about 120 pounds, has an insane transformation. He brought up a great point on the community live stream about how what works for him Losing 120 pounds is an insane feat, but he's maintained it. Is having a floor, having a basement that you never deviate from. And that looks different for everybody. For me, my floor is three workouts a week, 10,000 steps a day. I will never negotiate on those things. There's maybe five to 10 days a year that I'm not hitting my step goal. But if I'm hungover, if I'm underslept, it doesn't matter. I'm getting an hour of walking. I'm in the gym three times a week. I'm going to hit my protein goal six out of seven days, or I'm going to try to get close. Right, I'm going to have at least two whole foods meals. I have these rules that are so blindly easy for me to follow. For you, it may be 8,000 steps. It may be one workout a week. I've been at this for almost a decade. We're in different spots. That's okay. Don't compare me to you. You just have to have floors that you don't negotiate on. And even if that means you're making 20% less progress for a couple of weeks, you're still making 80% progress in the right direction. You see how a lot of life comes down to when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change? I think I need to get that tattooed on my forehead. The point is all or nothing is the quickest way to sabotage anything in life. People can't seem to view fitness how they view other facets of their, of their life. But think about anyone who's successful at anything. Think about anything you're successful at. Do you eat, sleep, breathe, and live it to the point where you hate it? No, because then you would hate it and you wouldn't love it and you wouldn't be successful at it. You have to treat fitness the same way. There may be times a year where you're like, I just want to lock the fuck in. I just want to get after it. I want to put my head down, hood up, and I just want to crush it for the next three months because what I want to do right now is change my body as much as possible. And then there's days where there may be a couple of weekends in a row where you go out drinking. You have fun with your friends. You have a lot of dinner meetings for work or conferences or life events, weddings coming up where you just have to make your bare minimum choices. I'm going to get a walk in before we hit, hit the town for the day and start drinking. I'm going to only have zero calorie alcoholic beverages. If we eat out and we drink alcohol, I'm just going to try to get the salad or the roasted potatoes and, and protein source. Like You have to have little rules that you don't deviate from, but you have to decide what your basement is. Your floor is different than my floor is different than Jake's floor. If you can establish a floor, you will consistently be getting at least bare minimum 1% better every single day. But if you get 1% better every single day, by the end of the year, you're 37 times better. That's insane. Think of being 37 times better than you are right now at anything, fat loss, muscle building, underwater basket weaving, anything. It doesn't matter. You have to stop the all or nothing mentality because in my opinion, it's the quickest way to lose. And those are my points. If you're still here, 29 minutes in, 28 minutes and 30 seconds, I appreciate you. Please drop a comment and let me know you watched the whole thing. It means a lot to me. If you like the episode, let me know. If you didn't like it, also let me know. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please do. It really does help me out. And we're going to end this per usual with a step check, and I want to see yours in the comments. It is Thursday, February 1st, 239 Eastern Standard, and I am at 4,602 steps. So after this, it's time to go out and hit a walk. Thank you for listening, everybody. It isn't easy, but it is simple. Don't overcomplicate it.